Hey, you got a crazy family? We want to hear all about it. Got a brand new podcast. It's called My Crazy Family. And boy, we know there are some stories out there. And sometimes it just makes you feel better to get it off your chest or to hear about somebody else's crazy family. It lets you know that maybe yours isn't as nuts as you thought. Yeah, the bar gets set pretty damn high. Trust me. You can call <laughs> in your stories right now at one 833 fam. That's one 833 Cray, C-R-A-Y-F-A-M, or write in your story at the website crazyfampod.com. That's crazyfampod.com. And by the way, you don't have to use your real name. It's totally okay if you just want to make up names, but you just need to get rid of this information. We are your place. You're not going to believe what you will hear on this podcast and the insane things that some families have put their loved ones through. one 833 Fam or write in at crazyfampod.com. Stay tuned for our official launch date. And start getting us those stories right now. Crazyfampod.com. My. My. Crazy. Crazy. Family. Family. My. Crazy. Family. Today on a truly chilling episode of Real Ghost Stories Online that three out of four moms agree could help to cleanse your whites of all those nasty deep blood stains. Load after load, when a woman walks the halls of her workplace, which happens to be the county jail, she realizes that in the reflective window mirrors that line the interrogation rooms, and that someone or something is appearing that isn't alive. That story and far more today on Real Ghost Stories Online. Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855-853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You are about to enter the world of the unknown and quite possibly the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. That indeed it is. And, uh, yes, you can call in 24-7 at 855-853-4802. We're right in at realghoststoriesonline.com with your real ghost story. We'd uh, absolutely love to hear it. And if you want the bonus stuff, the advanced episodes, the uh, bonus episodes, the archive, all of it ad-free, become an extra podcast person. That's a supporter. Only five bucks a month. Sign up at ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories. You get access to all the bonus materials, all of it in its entirety, all ad-free. You can just binge and binge and binge and binge. Again, go to ghostpodcast.com. Sign up there. Follow the link there to our uh, Patreon page. It's Tony and Carol Hughes with you on today's episode of the program. What's going on? You know, I have a lot of people reach out to me on this show and like they'll message me on Instagram or Facebook Mm -hmm. and uh, quite a few people recently because my dog. Mm -hmm. But um, it was very sweet and I really appreciate that. But it surprises me how many of them say, I'm going to write in sometime. I've got some good stories. I'm like, write in. Mm-hmm. Like, you just wrote me a message. It's about that easy. You just write in or leave a message if you don't write well. Yeah. Like, uh, it's super easy. It's one of those. Somebody had a story about um, like visitation from their pet when okay. after their pet passed. Yeah. And I was like, and what's the story? It just like kind of gave you the teaser of it. And then you're like, exactly. Like right after I lost my dog, which I'm kind of like, what did you have? Yeah. You wanted the story at that moment. (laughs) No. So I'm like, yeah. Could you share it? Sure. But yeah. So write him in. Yeah. We'd love to hear him. Uh, Of course, uh, uh, go to uh, realghoststoriesonline.com and uh, there you go. Send it right there. And we may use it on a future episode. of the program. Uh, I got a a first story here. It says, my name is Carol and uh, my story happened in 2008. It's when I worked at a county jail in the great state of Arkansas. I'll say jails have a lot of energy and it isn't good. I swear I've met people under possession in jail, but that story is for another day. I've worked at two jails and they both had some interesting things happening. Anyway, to the story. This night, I was working alone in a housing unit late at night. In this unit, there are four different areas. I'd say this happened around two or three in the morning. Okay, to start off, one area was completely closed due to painting, so there were no inmates in the pod, and it had been closed for nearly a week. I was sitting at the computer faced with my back to the uh, closed housing area. There was the church room in front of me that had reflective mirror glass. It was the kind of glass that when it was dark, you couldn't see in, but 
It reflected everything. Mind you, we worked with the pod area dark, so the only light that was from the hallway that was near the end of the course, the computer monitor. I was checking some trustees so they could get into their housing unit to sleep. And when I looked up, I looked at the reflective glass of the church room and I noticed there was someone walking on the second floor of the closed area. By the way, it would be impossible for someone to get in without me letting them in or them having a key, which I also had. There was no way for someone to enter without me knowing because the door in was right there where I was sitting. I ran to the window to look to see who possibly could be in the closed area. When I looked in, there was no one there. I asked the trustees if they had seen what I had seen. They said they were waiting on me to say something because they had seen the person walking across the floor too for some time. There was no one there. I made a co-worker go check. It's probably the scariest incident I've had. I do have a few more stories to share, but I felt this one was one of the scariest experiences of my life. Thank you guys for all you do. I love your show and listen to it every time I am in my car. That is, yeah, in the the church closed off area. I'm just picturing yeah, somebody like in a like a priestly type get up and floating. I don't know. Well, you know, like working in a jail or a prison type of environment and you see something anyway, something that shouldn't be there would be pretty terrifying, even yeah. if it wasn't paranormal, mm-hmm. because it could have been somebody escaped from their cell and now your life's going to be in danger sort of thing. Mm-hmm. So there would be that kind of scariness. But then just like I would think like a jail would be a place or a prison, you know, where people have passed and these are just not good people. Sure. I mean, some of them have kind of come around and they're better people than they were. But you know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. Like that's some pretty scary shit. Yeah. I mean, it is scary shit. It's and then every day you're dealing with these people who, you know, you're kind of I mean, any day. You're, you know, you're working around pretty scary people. Mm-hmm. I don't, I, I don't think I could do it. I think the negative respect uh, for people who do, and I think they're woefully un, underpaid. I don't think I could deal with that level of negativity all the time. Oh, and just that constant people trying to manipulate you. Yeah. And I, uh, yeah, I have respect for anybody who can do, but I don't think I could. I, I it would take its toll on me, and uh, I would not come out of that a, a better person. I would, I would have a lot of issues. I think. Um, let's go to another letter. It says, uh, "Hey guys, love the show. Listen often." I do have a real ghost story to share. It's not as crazy as many of the stories I've heard so far in your entertaining program, but it's real. Let me start somehow or somewhere else first. However, Tony, I believe uh, you and I are somewhat kin, uh, kindred spirits, like you. My default setting has always been to set at a slight to medium creep level. I like uh, reading in graveyards, listening to eerie ambient music in the background while I work or when I sleep. I've always been drawn to the supernatural. I have an interest in most things considered paranormal, like aliens, Loch Ness, Sasquatch, but ghosts have always been my main interest. I suppose it's because, with the exception of the possibility of alien life, ghosts always seem to be the most believable to me. Despite my fascination, however, I've always been a skeptic. First, who wants to believe but has a hard time doing so. Many of your listeners have stated in their stories, my encounter changed my perception of things. But I remain a skeptic to a large degree. I now believe that there are indeed forces or entities that exist who do not understand. I truly believe that, in fact, I know it to be true. But when I hear some of the stories your listeners share, in my mind, I can't help but call bullshit. I don't mean to belittle anyone, and I'm not trying to be a bully, but saying this is just that, given my own experience, which seems fairly tame compared to some, I don't see how all these things can constantly be going on. I can sum up my experience pretty quick. Years ago, I was with a friend and our respective girlfriends. We were checking out an abandoned hospital that had closed a few years before. There was a wing that housed the mentally ill back when it was open, and the place was rumored to be haunted. Of course, that was like catnip to me. So I talked everyone into going one night. Our girlfriends wouldn't go in. So it was just my buddy and me. It's dark and spooky, but to be honest, I was more worried about crackheads. We explored for a while. There wasn't much of anything. A few chairs, some tables, some trash and debris. 
Besides that, the place was empty. To try and freak ourselves out, and as a bit of a dare, we split up and explored desperately. I felt as if I were being watched, but I was in a creepy old closed-down hospital at night, so I figured it's par for the course. Other than the sensation of being watched, there was nothing I could describe as supernatural phenomena. Then, about ten minutes into my solo exploration, I walked into a large common room or something. Upon entering the room, I was immediately aware of someone else in the room. I couldn't see anyone. I shined my light all over the room and nothing. But I could hear someone. Not someone talking or breathing or making loud footsteps, but just the normal, nondescript sounds a person makes while moving about. I could sense another person, but my light revealed nothing. I'd have thought I would have been terrified, but I wasn't. My mind being loyal and staunch follower of logic and science and the world as we think we know it, that didn't allow me to jump to a ghost. I was confused more than anything. It was like I refused to believe there was no one there with me. The sound this entity was making were so mundane, it was like being in a room with a co-worker or family member who's just going about their business. And then, I guess, there were footsteps. I can't even remember, but this thing, whatever it was, started walking right towards me. I could hear it, I could sense it. Reflexively, I moved out of the way, and that's when I got hit in the face. Yep, the ghost socked me in the nose and mouth. My head flung back, there was numbness followed by pain, and there was blood. My lip was cut, and while my nose wasn't broken, it too was bleeding. I just stood there for I don't know how long. My mind couldn't process what had just happened, I guess. I could still hear it moving around, and I hauled ass out of there. That's my ghost story. This incident changed my life. I was a grown man who was afraid to sleep at night or to be left alone. Even today, so many years later, I'll freak myself out if I dwell on it. I really just wanted to get your take on things. This thing punched me in the face, causing real physical damage. Is that something ghosts can do? And if they can do that... What's to stop one from pushing someone down the stairs or strangling them? This incident kind of scared me for life, or scarred me for life. I don't see how people can be haunted for years or see shadow men and go through the things they claim they have gone through and still function as sane, rational people. The skeptic in me says that much of what I hear on your show is probably bogus, but given what happened to me, how can I completely discount it either? Maybe I just don't want to believe it all. You guys have pretty good heads on your shoulders. What do y'all think about this? So if I rambled, keep up the good work. Only reason I wrote it is because you guys have provided a safe platform for folks like me to share and ask questions. Thanks for that. Thoughts on that? Do you think that it, like, have you, you've heard way more ghost stories than me over the years. Have you heard many of people getting hit by the ghost, like causing physical injury? I just was having a conversation with somebody about that the other day. I forgot who or what because my mind is shit. Um, but it was talking about physical, uh, someone getting physically is harmed by a spirit. I think it was an investigator, somebody I had on the grave talks. Um, and again, it wasn't like, didn't like draw blood, didn't, you know, technically, you know, kill anybody, but um, but had had a physical encounter where it was like it was punched, the person was punched or hit. Um, and then there was some other talk about other things too, where almost a real vengeful spirit using the environment for its, uh, you know, its purpose of, you know, almost, I guess, like impaling someone on something in one of the stories I was talking about. Um, and, and just slightly, you know, people survived. But scary to think, well, if something's that, you know, motivated or powerful that they could you know, do that to you. I think that's like one of the ultimate scare things about ghosts is could it kill you? How often does that actually happen? I don't know. And I think, you know, usually that's the kind of stuff that you see in a scary movie or reading a scary book. That's, you know, how they always take a movie too far and it doesn't, you know, mm -hmm. like the blood coming out of the walls and stuff like that. You know, and so you do see those things in movies and books, but I don't know that. But I mean, it makes sense. You know, shit can fly around a room. Mm -hmm. Why couldn't you get hit? 
Especially if it's flying knives around the room or something like that. And if, I mean, if it's dark, though, it's also possible maybe there was something there that he just didn't see, mm -hmm. you know, but because that would be pretty terrifying. Oh, yeah. I mean, to be in a room and you, because there's just a feeling that you get, even when, you know, it's kind of not like I, it's not like, oh, he's talking to me. Oh, I hear something. You just he hear it. And then he heard some footsteps. Mm hmm. And I think he had a flashlight, so he couldn't see it. I, I would think he would have seen something. That's interesting. It is. It is a spooky I one. I don't like it. Thank you for uh, for sharing that uh, and helping uh, bring nightmares to Carol uh, this, this fine evening. <laughs> uh, let, it. Let's go to another. One thing to worry about. Let's see if we can get some here. Hi. Hey, everyone. This is Tyler calling from Ontario, um, I used to call into the show about a year ago, back when I used to be out on my bike listening to your show a lot, and I haven't really been able to call in that much recently, but this is a story I wanted to share because something paranormal happened to me uh, a few months ago, and I'm not sure if I called in about this. I'm pretty sure I called in about something a few months ago because you know, sometimes stuff is happening. I'll call in and let you guys know. But um, I'm really sorry if I already called in about this, but I don't remember. So I just wanted to talk about this while I had some free time to do that right now. So this story isn't really um, paranormal. It's, well, I mean, it is. But at the same time, it's a different type of paranormal experience than what you're used to. You know, usually people hear something, they see something. But this one was a lot more psychological based. And I say that because it actually took place in a dream. And um, it all focused around a really bad situation that I was in. Um, I was in this really, really toxic situation with somebody that I had been talking to at the time. This was back in April. And, you know, I, I had the sense that it was going to end between me and that person. And I just, you know, kept getting this gut feeling and I kept trying to deny it. And the night before it all fell apart, I had a dream where a woman and and I can't even really describe where I was because it was just like, you know, in a dream when you try and remember where you were, but it's kind of a blur. I do remember being in a bunch of clouds, this really hazy place. And this woman told me it's time to leave you have to go and I thought at the time that they were telling me to get out of wherever I was in the dream right I had no idea that later on this would have a huge connection to my real life situation uh, where I was in this really toxic situation with this person so the day after I had this dream it all fell apart you know they went on about how they didn't want me around anymore and all that and obviously I was sad but then it hit me that the dream I had the night before was not just a dream. It was more than that because sometimes, I don't know if this has ever happened to you, but sometimes if I'm trying to remember a dream, some of the details will come to me, you know, a day or two later, I'll be able to clearly make out what I saw in the dream sometimes a little bit later on. And it's really rare that that happens for me. Usually I'm able to make it out right away and then it fades over time in terms of what I saw in a dream. So that was really interesting that things were coming to me, you know, a couple of days after I had the dream and I was able to make out that it was my grandmother in that dream. And you're going to wonder, you know, how do I know this? But it just hit me. It's like in that moment, it just hit me that that's who I saw in the dream because I don't know how to explain it. That's, that's who I saw. And and yeah, and even trying to explain this, I know it sounds kind of confusing, but I think it was my guardian angel because there have been so many times that I've seen her walking around my house, um, not literally walking around, but sometimes if I go into my parents' room, you know, I'll, I'll see a woman and, and I just assume that it's my grandmother, whether it's the silhouette or just the presence of um, someone there, you can just tell. And, and I remember one time when I was younger, I saw a woman in there and I described who it was to my parents and they said that that was my grandmother. So I really do believe that she's my guardian angel. 
And I think in this situation, it, it was her way of telling me that, you know, everything's going to be okay. And yeah, I mean, it was just a weird situation for sure to have this dream and then have that actually uh, fall apart the day after. I thought it was just a dream, but I guess it was something more. Um, thanks for listening. I'm sorry if this story was a little bit short or a little bit not really that well told, but I just had the time to call in and I wanted to tell you guys about this and see what you have to say. I look forward to hearing it. Thanks guys. Have a great day. Thanks for sharing thoughts. I think you get all kinds of information in dreams and some of them are just stupid, nonsensical dreams, Mm -hmm. but um, I have those all the time, but um, I've also had the dreams where something has come to me um, for whatever reason in a dream. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I mean, I absolutely think that can happen. And maybe it was not necessarily to predict what was going to happen. He already had a sense, you know, and when you're in a relationship and you get that weird feeling like it's not going right, it's probably not going right. Yeah. So you have those weird feelings anyway, and that could bring on a dream. Um, sure. Because that would kind of consume you. And... But, you know, so I think that dream was just to kind of let him know he's loved and cared for. I like that. Yeah. I think that that's, I think- yeah, a dream. I, I don't ever have the, um, uh, let's say prophetic, but uh, anything where I've never had a dream where I thought like I was really meeting or I was there with, the, you know, a, a loved one or anything like that. They're, they're always just very weird. I have some weird scenarios in them, but it's. I, I've, I've never really had the, you know, the, there's a meaning out of a dream. Mm-hmm. I can usually figure out where my mind is going based on the odd things in the dream, but it's, that's just it. It's my mind flushing through everything and it's coming across in these ways. Um, but yeah, I've never, I've never had that. I'm not opposed to it. I, you know, if that happens. Cool. I, I just think I'll, if I have it, I'll know it because yeah. I don't think oh, I've had yeah. it. I don't think I've had it. But I, Cause I, but I think when you worry, like, and especially in a relationship, because, man, I've had that weird feeling so many times and I've never once been wrong. Mm-hmm. Every time I had a weird feeling, I was spot on with it. And and then you go to bed and it's in your brain. So, of course, you're going to dream about that sort of thing. Yeah. But, you know, if your grandmother's your guardian angel, of course, that'd be a good time for her to show up. Mm-hmm. You know? Because I think that my dad shows up frequently, mm-hmm. you know, like the other day, cause I always talk about pennies. And the other day when my dog, like I, his remains came home, I'm having a hard time with it. I found three pennies that day. And it was just like, I just, each one that I found it, it was like, I got you. That's the feeling I got when I saw it. It's like, okay, yeah. okay I got this. So I just think sometimes those little signs show up when you kind of need them. You do realize the breakup is pretty traumatic usually. But you do realize you can't just take the pennies out of the people's guitar cases. Those are for (laughs) those are for them. That doesn't. But there was pennies right there. It doesn't count as finding a penny in that sort of a situation. So just saying, just saying. Uh, Eight five five eight five three forty eight zero two is our phone number. At Real Coast Stories Online. Hi, guys. Taking the I joy. Thanks for the platform, and I got a great story to tell you. I called a couple times, actually three times before this, and I basically messed up and telling my story, kind of nervous and everything. So, and I'm at work, so it doesn't make it any better. But anyway, well, my name's Greg, and I have a great story. Back in the late '90s, I was in the Air Force, and I had a buddy that was in the Air Force with me. And we stayed in the same barracks room. And this is in Fort Campbell, Kentucky. And he, even though he was from Korea and I was from Ohio, he had cousins that lived in the area. They lived in Clarksville, Tennessee. Well, his cousins and his cousin's friends wanted to take these big, bad, tough Air Force guys, which was me and him, out in the middle of the night to some old abandoned school out in the middle of the country in Tennessee. And we were down for it. We were down for an adventure. You know, we're tough and et cetera. Well, I had an old, or I had a phone, and that was in the late 90s. So if you remember, they weren't very 
sophisticated at the time. All it had was a little antenna that pulled up. It did, however, have a key guard that's significant with this story. Anyway, so we get to this old abandoned school in the middle of the night, and it was creepy. It it was very creepy. We seen a bunch of rolling hills and old, uh, real old school, and we pulled up to it, and we went into the school, and we sat in the auditorium for a little while. And then we went up to a stage and got up on the stage and we climbed up the ladder into this like dressing area in the stage. It's kind of hidden and it's a tiny little room and it had, uh, it had pentagrams. It had burnt debris, looked like feathers. Um, I can't really say, you know, it looked like any kind of sacrifice was going on, but, or had gone on, but it, it, reminded you of it. I know there were burnt feathers at, at the least, and who knows? Well, there were shelves that came out, and that's what they were on, um, the burnt debris and stuff. So who knows? You know, it may have been kids goofing around, or it may have been something sadistic. Either way, it was creepy, and it set the tone. And my buddy and I, we climbed back down and started talking, and we started getting scared. This feeling came over us very, very... You couldn't quite put your finger on it, but it was very ominous, I guess is the best word. And we talked and talked until we said, we need to get out of here because it it was real. It was very scary, I guess is the best way to put it. So if they took us there to scare us at work, we wanted out, we went out, and we ended up leaving the area, went to this little courtyard into another building. And in that little tiny building, there was more graffiti or whatever you want to call it um, of evil stuff like upside down crosses and pentagrams and just curse word you name it again who knows what who put that on there but it, it didn't help when the, the feeling was already there did not get any reception the antenna did not work there was no reception inside that school or in that area now when we got out which we did real soon after that the reception came back it was kind of kind of weird. So anyway, a couple weeks went by. Him and I decided to go to Nashville, Tennessee one night during the week just to get out. And uh, so we got out and we came back and we get through the um, guard shack and get back onto the military installation. And we get into our parking lot and we're gathering up all our stuff. And all of a sudden it hit me. And I don't know what it was. Well, let me explain. We're sitting there getting everything together and this feeling that I've never felt before in my entire life came over me and it was the worst feeling I've ever had. And looking back on it now, I'm a 41 year old man now, so looking back on it now, it's like a combination of pure fear, evil, um, and like a uh, panic attack or something about to happen all at the same time. And I looked over at my friend. He goes, man, it looks like you've seen a ghost. Or, and I go, I, there's something wrong. There's something wrong. He goes, oh, don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Well, I was worried about it because I couldn't tell what was wrong with me. It felt like on the inside of me wasn't right. And I couldn't explain it. And the feeling kept growing and growing and growing. And something told me to, you know, check my phone. Now, my phone... Before we left for Nashville, I held the key guard down for four seconds to set the key guard because those phones back then, if you didn't do that and it accidentally called some number or something, it would give you roaming charges and it would be very expensive. So I never forgot. I was an attention to detail, Air Force type of guy. I never forgot to press the key guard. So I had that key guard set. However, when I pulled the phone out during that moment in time, I looked at it and it said calling and that was impossible because the key guard would have had to get hit for four seconds, lift it up, and then a four digit code would have had it and put in my code to unlock it and it was calling so it just freaked me out even more and I was so scared. I looked over at him and I pressed the power button twice real quick to end the call and I looked over at him and I just didn't know what to do or say. So once again, something told me to check. So I go to my phone. I go to recent dialed calls, and it said, 
the last dialed call was 666. And it changed me. Obviously, it changed the way I thought that night. It freaked me out. I, uh, I was so scared, and my friend just tried to tell me it was a coincidence, and I don't know how much of a coincidence that could have been with the fact I had that feeling come over me right before that. And me knowing everything I know now in my life, that was something that was not good going on. So my assumption is something, well, I want to know what you guys think, but I thought that something latched on to us or me when we were at that school. And the fact he was trying to introduce me into spirituality and everything else might have been a beacon too or whatnot. But either way, it it wasn't good because that feeling overcame me and then that happened. And I guess it isn't impossible that that could happen. You know, uh, uh, I could have leaned on something for four seconds and then hit 666 and hit send all in my pocket somehow, but I really highly doubt that would ever happen. Not to mention the feeling came over me that I was going to die almost before I even knew that. So that's the part that's unexplainable. I want to know what you guys think. Um, thanks for your time. I appreciate it. You guys have an awesome show and finally got a good story out the last two times I messed up. <laughs> thanks. Thank you for sharing that. What are your thoughts? Well, you know, what I'd like to know is what happened after that. Like he goes up to that moment, mm-hmm. like they were trying to attach to him and, and, you know, the six, six, six and, but did anything happen after that? Like he got the weird feeling. Did that weird feeling stay with him? You know what I'm saying? Sure. It's a good question. Did it, you know, so I'd kind of like to know the rest of the story. Just um, did anything happen? Because if after that day and life was fine, no biggie, like mm-hmm. it just went on and everything's cool, then I would be in the, you know, maybe it was just a coincidence thing. But if things continue to be dark for him and scary, yeah, you know, I just think that's kind of key to the story. To see if it just if it continues on, or was it a? Now I know. don't remember. See, I never had a cell phone then because they were just bulky and cumbersome, and I was like, "Who needs a phone?" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm saying that to one of my friends. Who needs to carry a phone? <laughs> My God, then you'd be on the phone all the time. But um, that really, did I say that or my mother? No, yeah. <laughs> no. People but, would say that. Anyways, they were really, but I don't remember that key guard thing that he's talking about. But like the four seconds and holding it down, then 666, he had the that horrible feeling came over him. Yeah. That would freak the shit out of me too. Yeah. But I just would like to know if he continued having you know, bad feelings and mm-hmm. I don't, I'd like to know you thoughts. Yeah. I mean, I would definitely like to know. I get creeped out when I see like numbers because uh, I'll, I, I get, I see the six, six, six a lot and it comes out on, you know, credit card statements or just you check out at the store or um, stop i gotta buy one more thing i get it a lot and it's weird and then i just kind of go <laughs> good one satan i'll see you later and then we <laughs> not me and, today me and harper skip out of the store together like <laughs> that crazy satan um <laughs> but you the, <laughs> you and your number instead of pointing up at the sky you're pointing down at the ground <laughs> you you and your numbers <laughs> Can you imagine but, if you start doing that and like people's <laughs> the reaction of others? <laughs> ah. Don't tell your daughter because she will start. I know. Your daughter will listen to this episode, then she's going to start. You won't even know she listened to this episode. Oh, she'll figure out what she can buy to like get exactly $6.66 to come up on the thing at Walmart. And then she'll be like, hey. <laughs> it, but the that would be weird, like that whole and um, before that started with the story of that going wherever they went and the all the upside down crosses like that would freak me out oh yeah and i could see me just being just freaked out and feeling super dark and icky and like something went i could see feeling like that like that's like that it's stuck to you cuz you just feel creepy experiencing it mhm 
Like if I saw it, obviously I must now worship Satan or something. What but, if what, yeah. if what if there was a dis? Maybe this, there is a disorder. What if you had a disorder where like the optics of everything were reversed? Not not like dyslexia or anything like that, but like literally up is down, and because your eyes are like that, and so then like well you see she likes to hang everything the opposite direction because she sees it the right direction so this person is like all these and she loves collecting like, crucifixes it's not Satan she loves Jesus she just doesn't know she's hanging him upside down <laughs> silly oh gosh that'd be great um, yeah so there you go uh, that's going to wrap up today's episode of Real Ghost Stories Online. Thank you guys for listening. If you like the show, become a supporter. It's only $5 a month at ghostpodcast.com. You get access to all of our bonus episodes, advanced episodes, the archive, all of it with no commercials. Sign up at ghostpodcast.com or through Patreon. The link there at ghostpodcast.com to take you right to our Patreon page. Until next time, for Carol and all of us at Real Ghost Stories Online, I'm Tony Bruschi. Thanks for listening. Satan.